Do you want to be a YouTuber? Priest, you heard that? No. Well, this is the video for you. What's good, YouTube? My name is King Infinity, and if you've never seen this beautiful face before, please consider subscribing to my channel and turning on those post notifications. 90% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed, and if you don't subscribe to my channel and like my videos, I'm going to be broke. So subscribe to my channel because I post a lot of entertaining content on here. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I make my thumbnails. Keep in mind that there are many different ways to make a thumbnail. The way I make my thumbnails is with Photoshop, and the thumbnail I'm going to make is the one you saw before you clicked on this video. Let's get into it. Oh wait! Oh my gosh! You need a picture to edit! Oh, you're right. Now let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do after importing the image to Photoshop is unlock it and duplicate the layer by pressing Command J if you're on a Mac or Control J if you're on PC. Next, I'm going to use the object selection tool to try to select myself from the rest of the image. I don't really like to use the object selection tool because sometimes it's not very accurate. And as you can see here, there's areas in the selection that I don't really want to be there. You see me here trying to take it out, but sometimes the edges are just too jagged and I don't really like how that looks. So what I like to do is use the pen tool because the pen tool allows me to be more accurate and select the areas that I want to have in my selection. After I'm done with the pen tool, I right click and then I press make selection. Usually I do a one point feather, but for this thumbnail, I decided to do a two point feather. And then I'm gonna press command J and make a duplicate of what I selected. Here you can see that it's way smoother than when I use the object selection tool. The next thing I'm gonna do is select the layer under the cutout and blur. Usually people use a Gaussian blur, but for me personally, I like to use a radial blur. I like the way it looks, and I feel like it gives a different dynamic to my thumbnails. You can use whatever blur you like, just try to test out different blurs. And I use a 10 point radial blur when I'm blurring my backgrounds. Next, I'm gonna color the background by using an adjustment layer, and I'm gonna pick a color, make sure it's colorized, it's selected, and then fix the settings to what I like them to be. Now I'm gonna add a 180 minute camera overlay to the thumbnail and then I'm going to mask out the cross in the middle. Also, I changed the blend mode to screen. What you see me doing here is taking the cutout and using the camera raw filter to add contrast and saturation and make the image more punchy or make it stand out more. And then I'm going to use the spot healing brush to remove blemishes from my face. And then I'm gonna add speed lines to add more elements to the thumbnail. If you search speed lines on Google images, it should pop up. What I like to do is put the speed lines under the layer of my cutout and then I either increase the opacity or drop the opacity depending on how I want it to look. One thing I like to do to my thumbnails is add a border. What you see me doing here is stealing a border from my last thumbnail. And what this is, is just white bars on a overlay blend mode. So 
Something new that I'm starting to do with my thumbnails is adding smoke. You can find smoke PNGs on Google and that that just simply means that the background is going to be transparent. So what I'm doing here is positioning the smoke and then I'm going to add a outer glow to make the, the smoke shine and make it stand out more. Make sure when you're making your thumbnails, you're making your thumbnails the way you want them to be. If you see anything that I'm doing that you would do different, by all means, go ahead. Now I'm going to add a new layer and with the paint bucket tool, I'm going to fill the layer with this selected color and then I'm going to clip it to the cutout. Clipping the layer means it's only going to affect the layer that is clipped. To. In this case, it is the cutout layer. Now with the brush tool, I'm going to remove the color off of the cutout layer where I do not want it to be almost creating like a glow effect. Then I'm going to double click on the cutout layer and add a drop shadow to make the cutout stand out a bit more. Now it is time to add text. Text is very important, but you don't need text all the time for a thumbnail. I don't usually add text to all of my thumbnails, but when I do, I try to make the text stand out. What I'm doing here is changing how much space is between the text and I'm changing the size of the individual lines. That way the text is not going to seem boring and it's going to stand out even more. Then I'm going to double click on the text layer and add effects like drop shadows and strokes and change the blending modes to make them look different and pop out more. Now on the cutout layer, I'm going to add a white stroke and change the blending mode to overlay. Now that I'm done with the thumbnail, I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to save it as a JPEG. You want to make sure that the size of your image is less than two megabytes because if it's over two megabytes, you won't be able to upload it to YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful, make sure you leave a like, comment and subscribe to my channel for more content like this and be sure to follow me on my Instagram link down in the description and if you're too lazy to go to the description, it'll be right here. So with all that being said, it's been the Photoshop King signing off on the fam.